Uh, we're gonna cover land next. So I'm, I'm assuming a lot of us have all been there, um, had been running displays for years, multiple displays and nothing's all uh, matched up correctly. Um, and we got mis misnamed fields and duplicates of all those fields. Um, so this is where we're gonna go to kind of get all that, as we always say, cleaned up. So um, we're sorted by uh, clients and farms here. Um, sometimes if you're like me, I like to just see the field names. Um, so we can sort by just the fields. We also have uh, the boundaries tab, guidance tab, and flags tab. So we're gonna kind of just go through all those just to kind of give you a good glimpse of how all this works. So uh, we're just gonna go to this, this quarter here we got first. So if you guys want are following along on your own computers, just grab a field. Um, and then we're gonna hit the arrow over to the right into it. So this is where we'd be able to go to um, edit our field name, our client name, um, and our farm name. As far as naming fields, like there's kind of two different ways you can do it. The first way would be you'd have your clients, you know, so-and-so farms, which is you guys, um, and then you have your farm, maybe home quarter, and then you have your field name, which would be east quarter or east 80, west 80, if you have a split farm or not. That's a few more button clicks uh, than I like personally. Um, so I usually recommend um, naming it how this is named here. The client and the farm are the same. And then on the field side, you can have home quarter east, home quarter west, if you have split fields or just so-and-so's quarter, whatever you call it. So um, it's a few less extra button clicks, but we recommend just trying to go through and make sure everything's named right, capitalized right. And that way everything is cleaned up. When we get it on multiple displays, everything, everything is set up exactly the same, so. Uh, you can see we have one active boundary and then down here we got base station so um, if you guys are uh, still on the radio rtk you can actually uh, put in here which base station you use for each field um, if you don't know uh, switching base stations you know using two different base stations on the field can vary your line a little bit um, we ran into it before uh, where some have had someone call me and say hey my line's like four inches off, I don't know why, it's, I'm on RTK, why has this happened? Well, do you remember what tower you used before when you, were, when you made this guy in sign and it's a different one? So we switch back to that tower and away we go, we're back to normal, so. Um, on that note, uh, there is a possibility with the 7,000 receivers, if you guys have switched to uh, SF RTK, there could be a variance there too, going from radio RTK to SF RTK. Um, obviously, if you create your guidance lines with SFRTK, it'll be um, accurate for extended amount of time. So, um, but there is a possibility that they could vary just a little bit, just, just like when switching between towers, your guidance line can be a little bit off. Um, it can be the, a little bit off changing from um, radio RTK to SFRTK, so. Uh, so we're gonna get into boundaries here. So we got uh, two boundaries here for this field. Um, if you will click this one and we'll click the arrow into it. So we got a boundary name for it. Um, you can change the name to it. Uh, when you make a new boundary, we actually, it'll actually have you name it. So um, me personally, I always just name it the field name. Uh, status, you can change it from um, active to inactive and irrigated versus non-irrigated. Um, I think that kind of gets more into seed corn uh, type stuff. <clears throat> Down here we got um, our uh, shapes. So um, who all has hills in here? I know I have plenty of hills at farm. So a lot of times we get something like this in here where we got a little blip. Um, could be just from um, going around waterways or terraces, non-farmable terraces. Um, it'll, if, and if you create a boundary, off of your planted or harvested area, um, it can give you these little shapes in here. Uh, most of the time, a guy's wanting to get rid of those. Um, so that's this spot right here, uh, where it's saying that it's got a boundary inside of the exterior boundary. Uh, we can go through there and we can delete that. Um, say it is a waterway, a passable waterway that we have a boundary around, we can change that to an interior boundary. And then we can, uh, well, excuse me, it was on interior. And then we can make it passable, so it'll turn it yellow. So 
um, whether it's something you want to just be able to plant through um, and your rows shut off, or if you got um, exact exact apply sprayer, um, shut everything off as you're going through that boundary. Um, if you create it as an interior passable boundary, um, it'll allow you to do that. Or maybe you just want to get rid of the darn thing, you can just delete it. So I'm going to leave it in there just for uh, that purpose. But um, something new that we haven't been able to do before is add in a uh, top and bottom offset. So uh, this is what we, a guy would be able to do if you were wanting to use turn automation, um, as well as uh, some guys uh, want to plant the in, inside of their field first um, and have their row shut off with their um, 80 or 120 foot uh, pass with the planter. So um, down here we can add in um, our uh, top and bottom offset. So we got headland, top and bottom offset. They can be different too. Uh, maybe one side of the field, you only do one set of end rows and the other you do two. Um, so we're gonna do both uh, top and bottom offsets here. Um, so top offset, uh, we'll just put in there 80 feet. Oh, 80 feet, say we got a 16 row planter, we're gonna do two sets of end rows. So we got our top and bottom offset in there. So you can see So you can see we got our dashed line here um, going off of our boundary uh, for our um, 80 foot headland pass. So, um, Hey Dallin, we plant that east and west though. What's that? I don't want it on the top and the bottom because I plant okay. that east. So um, yeah, we got that on um, north and south, uh, but and we actually just made our headlands on our north and south, but we plan it east and west. So we need to change the heading angle here. We're gonna change that to 90 degrees. So now it moved our headlands to the east and west side, which is the way we plan it. Awesome. Um, so next, say we need to um, edit this boundary. Uh, we're missing this corner down here. Um, it's not right what we need to do is we need to just be able to click on it. So if you click the purple line, it gives us these points that w uh, where we're able to move the boundary. Um, so if you click any of the white points, you're able to drag it out uh, where you need to be. Um, so say down here, we're way out in the row, we need to move that up a little bit. Um, now, if you notice down here, we got a really goofy uh, corner down here. And I just wanna point this out over here so sometimes in your more funkier shaped fields, uh, you'll get a ton of these points here and it just seems like you're, there's points on top of each other and you just, you just wanna get rid of them all uh, just to square out the corner or something. So over here on, our, on the right side here, uh, we can select these points. And so we can just draw a shape around it to highlight all these points and it turns them black. And then down here, we gotta hit this arrow and we're able to hit the delete. So it just gets rid of those points. Now if you zoom out, we kind of got rid of those. So it just snapped a line between the uh, next closest point. So any of these gray points are ones that can't be moved. However, if you click on them, uh, it turns them white and then adds in um, a clear point in between. So if you're trying to draw maybe a curve or something like that, you can keep clicking those clear circles to add more points to kind of round it out how you're wanting to. So we'll drag this down here the way we want it, like that. And you can see our uh, offsets have changed the way we want it. Um, so we got it drawn out how we want it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and save that down in the bottom right. So we got our boundary saved. Um, now, some of you guys might say, okay, that's great. I edited a boundary. How do I just, I picked up a new farm this year. Uh, we wanna go and add a new, a new boundary. Um, so our next tab um, across the top here is guidance. Um, so uh, here we have one guidance line for this field. Um, if it's anything like mine, you might have a bajillion guidance lines in there. One thing that I always do every year, um, I use adaptive curves on some stuff. Um, adaptive curves you cannot reuse when you do a setup file back into your display. So the one thing I always do is come in here and 
change the type to uh, adaptive curve, and then select all those um, and archive them. So if we were to need to archive some guidance lines, hey, we don't use this line anymore. Oh, this is when we had a 16 row, now we have a 24 row, something like that. Uh, we would need to check mark it over here on the left and then archive in the top. So um, you'll see this will look similar when we get into products. We're gonna go ahead and archive this. I'll show you how to revive it. Um, so, oh crap, didn't mean to archive that uh, guidance line. Um, if you go here into archived, there's our guidance line. Uh, we need to make that available, so we'll check mark it, and then up here in the top right, we can hit make available. So now we got it back. Uh, we'll get out of our archived filter here. And now we got it back in our guidance line list. So if you click the arrow next to it, um, it'll show you uh, the A and B points. Um, it'll show you the heading. Oops, I don't know, what, oh, it's showing our length here um, and the date it's created. So maybe you're trying to just go through and find out uh, when were these created. Oh, I know that all the ones from 22 aren't, aren't good anymore. I changed them last year in 23, so. <clears throat> um, we'll, like I said, we'll go through creating a new guidance line. Um, after this, so. Would you No, so that would be something you'd have to do on the display, and we'll talk about that on the display. So on the Gen 4s and Gen 5s, um, I've used it a few times uh, to, you can actually go there and duplicate your lines. So um, say we switched uh, planner spacing or something like that, I went from a 36 inch to a 30 inch planner, all right, I wanna use my same guidance line, but I wanna make it, I wanna duplicate it so I have the same heading, but in a different spot and not have any shifts in there. And that's how you, we'll, we'll cover that with the duplicating on the Gen 4s. But um, that's what I would say uh, would be the best thing to do. You can't do it from here, so. All right, so next, our next tab across the top here is flags. Uh, so we do have a series of flags in here. Um, active well, irrigation riser, rocks, Wellhead, and we'll show you how to make those flags on the display. Um, you can do it by area, point, or a line. So um, same way as far as, hey, um, we got rid of some, we don't have this well anymore, and we caved it in, whatever, we're gonna delete it. So you can go ahead and here, just like uh, editing the guidance lines, we'll check mark it over here in the, on the left side, and then we'll hit archive. It's saying you're gonna archive uh, one flag, so we're gonna go ahead and archive that. You can click into it. Um, it's gonna show the latitude and longitude. You can enter notes um, about it if you want to uh, for maybe a dad or son or something. Uh, when they're in the field, they can click on the flag and see what you have written about it. Um, this one's a point as far as the flag type. Um, you can change the category as well to be whatever you want. Uh, these are all uh, pre-made ones in here. <clears throat> 